Number 34. A narrow beam of light containing red and blue wavelengths travels from air through one centimeter thick flat piece of crown glass and back to air again. The beam strikes at a 30 degree incident angle. Letter A. Uh, what angles do the two colors emerge? All right. So um, check out number 15, I think, and maybe was it 16? Um, I kind of went through it. It's a very, very similar problem. All right. So it turns out that for letter A, the two colors will emerge all right, at the same exact uh, angle of incidence. All right. So let me just draw like a little blue line over here. Maybe this will be refracted a little more. So the angle will be in there. And then it will have the same kind of parallel line to the red. That's close enough. So it turns out that these angles, you know, if I were to kind of create two new verticals over here, these angles in here, these two verticals, will be the same, all right, um, as the incident ray. And we already kind of covered that topic. And the reason for that is, uh, you know, if you take a look at Snell's law, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. We can even expand this, n3 sine theta 3, right? The, and we can keep going, dot, dot, dot. So basically, um, the, the incident ray here, is converted quote unquote to a refracted ray in the ground glass. Then this refracted ray becomes the new incident ray on this boundary. Uh, and then these are the new refracted rays. All right, so what's actually happening is that we're using like information from the air to calculate then the crown glass, and then we're using crown glass to calculate back to air. So what's happening here is that this is the information for air, this is the information for the crown glass, and this is the information for air. So if these all are equal to one another, and again, like I said, check out number 15, 16 maybe, um, I don't really need that in there. I, I can, we, we can clearly see that the N1 is equal to N3, they're both air, and therefore the angles should also be the same. If the indices of refraction are the same, then the angles should also be the same, all right? So that takes care of letter A, basically. If you want, calculate it on out, okay? Uh, but you don't really need to. So this is then, so at one angle, so for letter A, the answer is 30 degrees relative to the normal, okay? And then letter B, letter B now is asking for us to, by what distance are the red and blue separated when they emerge, okay? By what distance are they separated? So again, this kind of might depend on how you perceive separation and whatnot, but uh, I'm going to, uh, let's calculate this distance. So here, I'm going to write it down here, okay? This little difference in distance. If you can see that, there's a little purple line that I just drew between the red and the and the and the blue. All right. So that's what I'm going to find in there. I want to find my delta x. We'll call it. All right. So basically, what I want to do first is I want to find these two angles of refraction, both for the blue and for the red. Okay, in the picture. All right. Right in here, guys. Both for the blue. Here's the line, and both, and then for the red. Okay. I'm, so, I'm, fine, I'm following the identical pattern to what we've done in the, uh, I think, number 15. All right, so I'm probably going to run through this now. So Snell's Law. So N1 sine theta 1 is equal to N2 sine theta 2. All right, I want to find the index of refraction here, so sine theta 2, so divide out this, right, and then take the inverse sine of both sides, okay? So this is now inverse sine. And that's going to be canceling, oops, canceling this sign on the right now. And that's your formula. So now we can plug in, right? N1 is going to be that of air, so it's just 1. Then times the incident angle, which is 30, then divided by the index of refraction now for, let's say, the blue light. Okay, let's do this for the blue one. So this is then 1.524, okay? And I'll put this in blue, and that's then going to equal now theta 2. So theta 2 is going to be... Take out the calculator, inverse sine, inverse sine of uh, sine of 30, divided then by 1.524. So this is about 19.15, so 19.15 degrees, all right? Now we're gonna do the same thing for red, but the only difference is we're gonna change the number down here. So this is 1.512 now, all right? So just do the same calculation, inverse sine of sine of 30, divided by 1.512 now, and it works out to be 19, so this is now theta two, you know, for the for the red is now 19.31. This is a 1.5, by the way. That looks a little weird. So let's see if I can erase that a little bit. 
one five. All right. So those are those angles, right? So now what I want to do is uh, I'm basically going to create now in the picture two two triangles. Okay, I'm going to create a blue triangle here, and I want to find now this length down here at the bottom. Just call that blue x or something. Okay. So I want to find that. Remember, I just found the angle in here, and I know the height. They told us the thickness of the glass. It's right 0.01 meters uh, or one centimeter. And you can leave this in terms of centimeters. It doesn't really matter in this case, but I like to convert it to meters. So I'm going to be using now the tangent function. I know this angle. I'm looking for the side opposite, and I know the adjacent side. Okay, the hypotenuse is the longest side right there. So that's why we're using tangent. So tan now of that angle of 19. 19.15 is equal to that opposite side we called it x and then divide it now by the 0 0.01 okay so x then is equal to all you're going to do is cross multiply here so tangent now of that angle multiplied then by 0 0.01 so this works out to be about 0 0.00347 meters about three and a half millimeters now what you're going to do is you're going to do the exact same calculation, but now we're going to do it for the red triangle. So where's the red triangle? Take a look at the picture. Ready? Here's the red triangle, the bigger one now. Okay, the bigger one. The bigger one's the red triangle. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is basically my angle changes. Okay, now it's the red one. So this is now 19.31. And now I'm going to calculate the red X at the bottom. Okay, the total length down there at the bottom. So this is then going to be now uh, tangent. I'm going to use the exact number from before, then multiplied now by 0.01. So this works out to be now 0 0.00350, okay? Now then, to finish it out, if I need to find now the difference in the length there between the two, take the larger value here and subtract it by the smaller one, all right? And that will find the difference. So just subtract the two, and there you go. All right, so this is now the delta x value, and this is then going to be equal 3.09 times 10 to the minus fifth. That's in terms of meters. You know, that's about 31 or so micrometers, but uh, you know, you can definitely convert to whatever unit. All right. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in again. And uh, yeah, check out some more of the videos, physics stuff. Also, if you're taking camera pre-calculus, we've got a whole bunch of solved solutions out there for you. All right. Appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Bye.